In lessons one and two, we made a sphere. In this lesson, we'll make four other basic geometric solids, the cylinder, the box, the cone, and the torus. A torus is like a donut. To understand how to set up a cylinder, you can go to the Help menu and go to Index and type Cylinder. And double click on that and it tells you how to set it up. It tells you it has a base point, a cap point, and a radius. And then it has various modifiers. Let me uh, give you a better diagram so you can see what's going on here. So a cylinder requires three parts to specify where it is and what its radius is. The first is three numbers that indicate the location of the base point. The second is three numbers that indicate the location of the cap point. And the third is just a single number, which is the radius of the cylinder. So let's uh, create a new file and we'll put a cylinder in there. First we have to copy the camera, the light source, and let's also copy the sky sphere from our previous lesson so that we can use that. And copy and then new and paste that. So now we can put in our cylinder. So let's see, we type cylinder, cylinder, uh, set brackets. I like to put the closing set bracket in as well so I don't forget to do that. And put a comment after it, end cylinder. That way if I put a lot of stuff in between I won't forget to have the closing bracket and I'll also know where it is. Okay, so I need a location. I need the base point. Let me put the base point I want to put it in the center, but I want it two down. So we'll make uh, X and Z zero, but Y, I want to make Y negative two. And then we need the cap point. So we'll put that two up, zero, two up, and zero. And let's give it a radius of two. So that'll give us a cylinder of uh, total height four, because it goes from negative two to positive two in the Y direction and a radius of two. And then we need to give it the color red. Let's copy that from the sphere that we had in lesson two. So I can copy the pigment and finish of that sphere. Highlight and copy that. And we'll put that into our cylinder as well. Let's go to paste. And uh, that should do it. If we try to run this, we'll have to give it a file name. So let's call it less three and see what we get. Aha, there's our cylinder. Now I don't really like the perspective. It's kind of curved at the top. We're too close to it. The problem here is that we're using a wide angle camera there is a better camera that we could use. Let me show you that. The uh, camera that we're using, the default camera, is somewhat of a wide angle camera. What you can do is add angle. That's the angle that the camera uses to view the scene. If you make it a smaller angle, like 15 degrees, you also have to move it back quite a bit. Location negative 10. Let's move it to negative 50. That's way back. Let's run it and see what this looks like. Ah, much better. We can see it. We're looking at the cylinder straight on. Let me rotate that cylinder a little so that we can see what it is really like. Let's see. If I rotate it about the x-axis, I think I want to rotate it negative 30 degrees or some negative angle about the x-axis. Let me give that a try. And maybe we can get a better idea of what the cylinder looks like. Ah, yes. So here's the cylinder. It's a nice solid object. has a top to it. Um, one more thing about the cylinder to make it more interesting. 
is after you've specified its location, you can say open. And let me show you what that does. See, it opens it up so you can see the inside of the cylinder. So like it's a can without a lid on it. But that's uh, basically how you do a cylinder object. Okay, let's uh, do another object. Let's do a box. Let me move that cylinder over, maybe a few units to the right. Let's do a translate. Oh, what's a good position for it? Let's go three to the right, three zero zero. Let me make sure that doesn't mess anything up so that I have room to put a box in here. Aha, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we're going to do another one now. And that's going to be a box. But to know how to set up a box, again, we'll go to the Help menu and type in the keyword Box. And uh, that tells you how to do it. You specify Corner 1 and Corner 2. Once again, let me show you a better diagram for that. As you can see, a box is specified by locating two corners on a long diagonal of the box. It's done like this. So let's see, we can start here and put in box, put in our set brackets, and the closing set bracket with a comment after it that says end of box. And then in between, we have to specify the two corners. So let's see, we have to make a decision. Uh, say the left corner. Not sure what size I want it. Let's go negative one on X. We'll try to keep it in the center. Let's go negative two for Y. And I think Z should be the same as X. I'm just guessing at this. Let's see. And one, two, one. So I've got a left corner and a right corner. Left, The left corner kind of sticks out on the Z. I need to give it a pigment and a uh, finish. So let's copy that from the cylinder that we did. Copy that and uh, put that in our box, so we're going to have a red box. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, it's running into the cylinder. Hmm. Uh, didn't give much thought to its location. Let's, uh, I know what we can do. Let's move it left a little bit. We could move the cylinder more right, but there's not a lot of room. Let's translate, um, let's say negative two in the X direction. And maybe we can see it better. Oh, I can't spell translate. Let's see, translate. There we go. Ah, there's our box. Again, it's a little bit hard to see what's happening with this box. Uh, let's rotate it. Maybe... Uh, negative 30 degrees with respect to X. See how it looks that way. Oh yeah, I can see. I can see what's happening. Let's rotate it with respect to Y a little bit. Let's say 20 degrees positive and see what happens. All right, see, you can see that's, that's how you create a box. I specified the lower left corner and the upper right corner which is in back there. I, actually, I think I have that backwards, the way I'm talking about it. But that's how you create a box. Now let's uh, do a cone. Let me take that box out and let me take this cylinder out. Let's highlight that and take that cylinder out. I'm getting too cluttered here in my picture. Okay, to see how to do a cone, again, we go to the Help menu and type in the index word cone and keyword for cone. Let's see. 
And a cone has a base point, a base radius, a cap point, and a cap radius. And they draw you a little diagram there. Let me show you the diagram a little more clearly here. So a cone is sort of like a cylinder, except there are two radii. Again, you have a base point and you have a cap point. And you specify the radius of the base and the radius of the cap. If you make the radius of the cap equal to zero, you have a true cone. If you make it anything else, any positive number, you actually have what's called the frustum of a cone. So let's put in our cone. Cone, set bracket, end set bracket, comment, end of cone. And let's see, we need uh, the base point. So let's put that two down. Y is negative two. And we need the base radius. Let's give it a radius of three. Oh, I didn't put a comma there. I think I need it. Radius of three. And we need the cap point. So zero, positive two, two up, zero. And let's give that a radius of one. And again, we need to give it a color. So let's go up and, oh, I didn't copy the, color. I should have copied that before, but I have it from lesson two. I can copy that. Copy it and put that in. And let's run it and see what we get. Okay. Again, I'd like to rotate it so that I can see better what's going on here. So let's rotate it by about the x-axis. Rotate um, negative 30 about the x-axis and see what it looks like. Okay, so there's our cone. Actually, it's a fustum of a cone. Let's see, if I change the top radius to zero, I should get a true cone. And there we have it. So that's how we make a cone. All right. One more object. Shall we keep the cone? Let's move the cone to the left. Translate. Translate. Oh, let's say negative three to the left. Let me make sure that works okay. Alrighty. And we're going to make another object. Uh, let me move that cone down a little bit, too. Just so I have a lot of room. One down. In fact, let me change the color of the cone. Let me make it a green cone. See how that looks. Oh, really cool. Okay, so that I have room for one more object. So we are going to do what's called a torus. A torus is like a donut. Again, we go to the help file and type in the keyword torus. And uh, let's see what that looks like. Okay, torus only has two things, a major axis and a minor axis. Let me show you what the torus actually looks like and what this means. So a torus is always centered at the origin. Of course, you can uh, translate it and move it wherever you want. You could resize it and do other things with it too. The uh, torus is specified by its major radius and a minor radius. The minor radius is the radius of the round part of, well, the donut part is, I don't know, how can you say that, a slice of the donut. And uh, the major radius tells you where the uh, overall donut lies. I think the best thing to do is to just try it out. So we put in the keyword torus. And again, the set brackets.
end of torus. And it requires two numbers. The first is the major radius. That's a bigger number than the minor radius. Let's give it a major radius of 4 and a minor radius of 1. And then we've got to give it a color and a finish. So let's copy that from above. Copy it from what we did for the uh, previous object. And uh, let's see the cone. Um, let's change the color back to red so the chorus doesn't, torus doesn't look like the cone. And let's see what we get. Aha! Uh -huh, it's kind of bumping into the cone. Let's uh, rotate it a little. Rotate like we did with the other things. Let's say negative 30 with respect to the x-axis. And let's move it up. Uh, how far up should we do? Two in the y direction. And then maybe we can see it better. Aha! There it is. So a torus is a donut. That minor radius is the radius this way. And the major radius is from the center to the middle of the ring around the torus. But that's what a torus looks like. Well, let's call it quits for this lesson. In the next lesson, I want to show you some of the things that you can do, how you can put a picture on an object, and that sort of stuff.